Well, welcome back to another hot episode of Dialogue. I'm really excited about today's episode because I get to sit down with another amazing woman, Rachel Proctor. This woman is a DeSoto Councilwoman. She is also a speaker, life coach, as well as an author. And I'm excited that we're gonna sit down and dialogue with her. Thank you so much, Rachel, for being on the show today. Girl, finally. Yes, I know it's been a minute. We've been trying to get this together. I'm excited. For a very long time. Wow. <laughs> and like, seriously, it's been a long time since we actually got to sit down and just talk I know. one-on-one. -on -one. Like, yes, yes, yes. I feel like we just went to lunch one time and then that was, and that it. was it. That was it. So, so much has happened yes. since we last sat down and talked. But even before we get through all that's happened, let's talk about like this book Oh seriously gosh, like because yes. i know there's many things since the book but the book like please tell us about this book yes the name of the book is called my best year ever my best year ever how many of you want to have a good 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 exactly, year this year yes so this book is something that i put together and many many years ago probably about maybe three or four years ago god told me that i was supposed to write a book but I just never could come together with it, with what it was supposed to be about. And so one thing God showed me as he was giving me this particular book and giving me the lessons and the things that I was to write about is when he gave me the the calling or call me to do that, I had not become yet what I was supposed to write about. Whoa. I had not lived it out yet. And so this book is something that's so dear to me. And it's uh, the lessons that I talk about are things that are not things I've read about or heard about, but things that I've actually lived about. And I'm so anxious to share those with women uh, to help them, to encourage them to know that, you know, no matter what situation you've been going through, if you feel like you're stuck on a cycle year after year, this can definitely be your best year ever. So yes. I'm really excited about I'm it. I'm excited. Okay, so can you give us a, give, it, give us a little bit of secrets that are in oh the gosh. book? A few little secrets, please share. Because I'm thinking my best year ever is 2016. I just got engaged. <laughs> so I need to figure and out. congratulations what. about that. Too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But I mean, I want to make sure that this is going to be my best year ever i mean actually well best year ever but i want all the other years to be great as great well. too yes and when you get this one that you have no choice but to, it's just going to be a snowball effect so one of the things that um i talk about in the book is a lot of times we talk about having faith and a lot of christian women uh, talk about different principles but a lot of times we don't really know what that means in tangible terms what does that mean to have faith like how can i apply those different things so a lot of the things that i talk about um which this book is it's kind of a twofold thing it's it's the actual book where i write about the different lessons but it's also a journal yes. so that you're able to actually take the questions take the lessons reflect on those things spend some time with yourself spend some time in prayer with God actually reflect on those different things because I feel like knowledge is not power but applied knowledge is power Ooh, hold up now I have never heard that before knowledge is not power but applied knowledge is, is power, power. Girl. So when we start doing the things, sometimes it's not that we don't really know what to do. A lot of times it's just that we're not doing what we know to do. So the book really helps you to really dig deep to see what things have you been tolerating? Uh, what's not working for me? What's keeping me stuck? Um, and so those are some of the things that I really share in the book and I'm sorry I'm still stuck on <laughs> knowledge is not power it is not <laughs> for so long that's what we've been told like right. that's everyone believes that you know what let me just go and get this knowledge let me read this self-help book or let me pick up all that's 50 so in a store and next thing you know you have a library full of books that right. you've read but still you've seen no change in your life right. whatsoever because you haven't applied all the knowledge that you've right. learned to your life Rachel, that is some deep stuff, girl. <laughs> that is deep. Okay, okay, I want more. Like, and I know everybody else want more. Okay, just uh, one more secret, one more secret. So one of the things that um, I talk about, and even in some of my live events, like my masterclass, which I hosted um, last year, yes, um, a lot of the things it. that um, we focus on 
or that I focus on, is, I talk about life, love, and business. Those are some of the three uh, main facets that I feel like really make up who we are, what really kind of help us to become who we are supposed to be when we focus on kind of honing into those areas. And so I feel like moving to the love piece of that, the one that's right there in the middle, one of the things that I feel like is so important, especially as women, is to be connected and have the right relationships. Yes. Anybody who we've seen that is stuck on the hamster wheel, exerting energy day after day, but really getting nowhere or really took a dive, a nose dive in life, you can usually trace it back to some type of relationship that that person had that got them on the wrong track. And even on the flip side of that, even when you look at people who are successful, a lot of times you can trace it back to other positive relationships that they've had when people have really pushed them and believed in them uh, to help them get to places. So I feel like relationships are so critical. So some of the things that I talk about in the book in regards to relationships is helping women to identify detrimental relationships or draining or toxic mm. relationships and how to begin to let those relationships go without losing it. Because yes. a lot of times change, when we're seeking to have change in our life, it feels like we're having to cut off things. It feels like we're losing things. So I, some of the things that I really uh, share in the book are gonna help you to be able to recognize those things that are really draining you. Yes. Um, start setting up some boundaries for your life, for your space and for your peace, your peace of mind yes. uh, in those aspects. So I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about this as well. Like like, I mean, it's so great. It's already been launched. People are going crazy over it. And yeah. I'm just thankful to see what God is just doing in your life. That's amazing. So now, tell me what you had to go through to get to this place, like even with releasing the book. Because, you know, earlier you said you had to become that woman before releasing right. it, getting right. it out there. So tell us, like, what it was like. What were you going through? Wow. Um it's kind of like one of those things I can remember back, it was about 2010, hmm. maybe around that time. And it was kind of like you're going full speed and life is great and you have no worries. Then it's kind of like something hits you and just life as you know it is totally changed and gone. And um, I had to get to a place to where I began to accept what God was allowing and not ask God, how can I get out of this? But asked him, what can I get out of this? Hmm. Because I was at a place to where I just was questioning God and just like, okay, why do I have to go through this? What did I do? And God was showing me, you know, I'm using these things to make you into someone that people will come to. I'm restoring you by, I'm going to send people to help restore you so that you can share your story so that yes. it doesn't become their future. Hmm. And so God really helped me. And I learned a lot about God's timing. Um, I learned that I can't, I, I, I shouldn't try to change God's timing, but I need to recognize God's timing. That is so important. And I, I think it's, it's, it speaks volumes because it's, one of those things, when you try to make things happen for yourself, right? when God has already revealed to you that, oh, you're going to write this book or you're going to do these things, you're going to speak in this place. But then when he reveals it to you, you now start trying to, let me do this to make it happen. I think I can get there a little <laughs> bit quicker, so true. you know, but if you recognize God's timing, you'll be content with the season that you're in, no matter what season oh, wow. it is. Yes. And it just seems just to see how you've blossomed and you've grown and like, I just would, it wasn't that long ago, but so much has happened. So much has happened. So much has happened, but it all started with you just being, learning to be content and say, God, I recognize your timing and I'm going to just enjoy and be peaceful yes. and also apply that knowledge. Apply that knowledge. That's apply the key. Apply that knowledge. Don't let the lesson be in vain. Yes. Don't let it be in vain what you're going through. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So you are also a DeSoto Councilwoman. Yes. Yes. All right. Now that's cool. Now, how in the world did you get to that place? And did that have yeah. any, a lot of influence on where you are today? I would say, yeah, I did have quite a bit of influence on, um, on where I am today. But honestly, I've always been that even as a small child, I've always been, um, I've never been a big talker per se, even though some were probably big to differ, but, um, I've always been the child that loved, uh, leadership or just being, 
uh, able to affect change around me in the mm -hmm. community. I was always the child that was student council president, honor society president, class president. Ooh. Even in college, I pursued a lot of leadership roles. And I don't think it was that I was so much obsessed with having a title or uh, wearing some kind of badge of honor or feeling like, oh, I'm in power now. But I realized that when you really are a change agent at heart and you really are a servant at heart, um, you have to get a seat at the table yes. if you want to make certain types of changes. And I think it's so important when we talk about uh, Christians being uh, placed in what could be looked at as kind of the world's systems. But having people that are godly that are there in those systems to help affect change or help push the kingdom agenda forward. Yes. I think it's important, especially as women, as believers, even the men that are watching, um, to, to sometimes there are certain, only certain types of change that can occur when you have, when you kind of get in the driver's seat and kind of yes. get in some of those positions. And you are making a ton of impact in your community. I mean, you do a scholarship through Emerge. Yes. I, girl, let, before I even, people are probably like, <laughs> what's Emerge? Like, that's just another one of the million things that Rachel does. <laughs> So, okay, tell me about Emerge, like, because when I see the Facebook post and I read like what you were doing for your community through your organization, it's a big deal. So yeah. girl, you got to tell us about that. Well, Emerge Leadership is an organization that I started because I'm a first generation college student. Uh, my parents didn't go to college. Uh, I was the first one to go to college amongst my siblings. And so there were a lot of things when I went to, uh, when I went to college and I, I had to kind of feel my way mm -hmm. and kind of just figure everything out on my own. And it was, it wasn't easy to say the least. Yeah. And so there were a lot of things when I look back on it today and I'm like, okay, well, if I would have known this, then I probably would have done that. Or mm -hmm. if I would have known that, then I probably would have done this. And so I really have a heart for young women and not even so much as just only in the aspect of going to college, but just growing into womanhood in general. Yes. A lot of our women, our young women, they don't have a lot of the role models that you and I had growing up. They don't this have that anymore. Um, there's, they have so much exposure to a lot more than we did. So they have so many things, so many ideologies, Reality so many, yes, that we didn't have that are affecting the way that they think about themselves, the way that they think about what they can achieve. And so I really wanted to start something meaningful uh, to help those young women, to provide them with guidance, with mentorship, to help them with pursuing leadership roles, even while they're young, yes. um, pursuing educational opportunities, because education is everything. And then also pursuing opportunities to form sisterhood, to form yes. bonds with other women, because we need each other. Mm -hmm. And at that age, a lot of times I would see the girls, they were so catty and so competitive and they really don't understand how important it is that we support one another because when one of us wins, we all win. We all win. And so, yes. yeah, that's, that's one of the things that, um, that particular organization uh, has done. And so again, I just kind of have the spin off, like you said, with my Facebook posts or my inspirational text messages that I send out daily um, emerge to me. And a lot of people don't notice it, but when you look at the word emerge, the way that I spell it with the capital M E mm -hmm. in the middle, it means that me, I'm emerging, yes. um, you Ooh, know, just I growing into that. the, to the me, woman that I'm emerging. I'm supposed to be. And so I, I, when I got that, inspiration of that epiphany from God to approach it that way, um, he gave me a vision of a butterfly. Mm -hmm. And we look at what the butterfly is right now, but when we look at where it starts, when we look at the caterpillar, it shows no indication that it will ever have that type of a beautiful destiny. Yeah. And so many of us look at where we are right now in our lives and and we're just like, okay, because we've been in it so long, we don't really ever see anything outside of the immediate. Yeah. And so those are one of the things that, that I seek to do through spreading those messages and helping those young women and whoever comes across the messages is to know that you have a greater destiny. And if you continue to just look at where you are now, you're going to totally miss the beautiful destiny that God already has placed inside of you. Because the caterpillar yes. has everything it needs already inside already of it inside. to become its destiny. So mm. that's one of the things I really hope to encourage people with. Wow. Man, that just touched me and that blessed me. Wow. So here you are, all these amazing things. When you were younger, did you think this is where you would be or where God would have you? No. Hmm. No. 
I was really, really introverted and shy. And I think I think destiny does leave us clues, though. I think looking <laughs> back on it, it's kind of like, okay, that's why I was this way or that way or or whatnot. Um, even as be, even becoming an author, I was obsessed with books, um, with writing uh, as a as a small child. I mean, like when most kids are like getting money to go get candy, I was begging for money to go to the book fair. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I don't never met anybody like that. <laughs> no, seriously. I would like when the book fair when I would get or the scholastic little weekly reader things would come out. And we would order books. I mean, I had, even as a small child, I had hundreds of books wow. because my mom would just, you know, invest, you know, allow me to invest into those types of things. Um, as I do now, I have probably more books than I'll probably ever read in a lifetime. But <laughs> I think destiny does leave us clues and it, it kind of lets us know. And although we don't see it in that moment, I think the amazing thing is that we kind of look back and it was kind of like those, I think I've heard someone call them and I don't remember who said it, but they're called God winks. Mm -hmm. When God will kind of give us a little wink, a little glimpse of, yes. of what he has for us. And so I'm going to have to start using that. The God <laughs> winks. I love that. Ooh. Just kind of a little hint of, of what he has for us. But no, I, I didn't because all of the things that I'm doing now, as far as being a public speaker, um, I probably, I remember in college, I took a public speaking course because I just was so shy and it was probably a C I prayed for. Like I did, I think she just gave me a C just to be nice to me because I just failed miserably at it. And it just, I don't know, I just never could see myself standing in front of people and talking and people always have a hard time believing that. But yeah, I think sometimes... It are, comes <laughs> off as natural. Wow. Like, I mean, you're a great speaker. I remember the first time I actually saw you in person and I heard you, you were accepting an award and I was like, I need to know this woman because she, just the aura, just, you know, the humbleness and the meekness in your voice when you speak, it's so genuine. Uh -huh. And I can tell that, you know, when women and the women that come in contact with you, they'll be tremendously blessed. Well, praise God. <laughs> we thank the Lord. And I thank you again for just being here on the show. But there's one more thing that I would like to do. But even before I do that, one more thing. Is there anything that you would like to leave for the viewers, for them to know, or something that could, you could just share? Wow. Uh, one of the things that kind of going back to what I talked about earlier about the caterpillar and the butterfly, just realizing that we cannot mistake God's delay for our destinies. Mm. Um, and in order for us to have the best year of our life, we have to really, really realize that and really get to a place to where we are intentional about change in our life. And I won't even say just change because a lot of times when we simply change, we have the opportunity to change back. Mm -hmm. But really be intentional about transforming ourselves because when we're transformed, we are made brand new. We're a brand new creature. And so just being intentional this year yes. about transforming your way of thinking because your your actions follow your thoughts. Everything starts with the way you think. So just thinking up, just thinking positively thinking um, thinking is one up. of the things that I would leave. Just think up this year and that it can be, it, it, you know, sometimes we're like, okay, can I even live a life other than what I've always seen? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. You definitely can. Yes. So. Now, before we get to that one last thing, I got to ask you to do this. Please tell everyone how we can stay connected with you because yes. we need to make sure we going to have the best year ever, my <laughs> best year ever. Yes. So uh, my social media handles, Instagram, uh, Twitter, it's Rachel L. Proctor. And uh, also you can just go to my website. That's a great way to stay connected with yes. me. You can hop on my email list, get some free gifts free by doing resources. that. Yes, um, by know. going, you know, we like the free stuff. <laughs> we like the free we stuff. Like the free stuff. <laughs> you can go to rachellproctor.com as well. Or you can also stay connected with me on a daily basis by texting the word emerge, E -M M E R G E to the number four one four one one and you will be locked okay. in. Okay. Yeah. So again, you'll be locked in to get my daily inspirational text messages and hope they will uplift you. Yes. Well, thank you so much. So now we're gonna get to that one last uh -oh. thing that I was telling you about. Okay. <laughs> so I call this my little magic box. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. And have you ever heard of this game called Table Topics? 
No. <laughs> it's great. I love it. What do I do? Just pull one out? Pull one out. Mm -hmm. Let me reach down deep in here. Yeah. Oh, girl, you're the first one that's done that. All right. So you're going to read it out loud, and it just gives us a little bit more oh. into Rachel's world. How do you define success? Hmm. Coming from a life coach. Wow. Well, I think success is what you make of it because we're each... We each have our own journeys. We each have our own um, things that we have to go through to become who we are supposed to become. And it kind of reminds me of something, and I was actually uh, right, just kind of journaling about um, having it all. Can mm. we really have it all? And that brought me to what a definition of success would be. And I think you define that. Mm. I think success is what you make of it. If you're happy, um, if you're growing, if you're at a place to where your relationships are healthy, uh, where you're able to support yourself and your needs are met, I think you're success. Yeah. You know, sometimes we look at it as being a lot of um, tangible things, but sometimes you're a peace of mind. If you've been through enough to where you've lost that and you've gotten it back, then, hey, you're a success. Yes. So I think success is what you make of it. Yes. And, you know, I'm going to just add something to that. I think also don't ever measure your success to someone else's or oh, your wow. definition of success to someone else's. Yeah. Because success, it's different for everybody and it looks different from everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've heard there was, uh, again, I don't remember who, where I got this from, but there was a quote that says, never measure your success with someone else's ruler. Mm. Don't you like that? Girl, I like that. Girl, <laughs> I'm gonna have to, you're going to have to write that one down for me. I'll write it down keep before I leave. Put it on my wall. <laughs> well, thank you again, Rachel, for being on the show. Yes, it thank you really for was me. an honor. Honor, and I'm excited to read the book. I Yay. know everyone's going to love it and I'm going to love it as well. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And thank you to all of you who have tuned in again for another episode of Dialogue. Until next time.